it's a Bible reading to help you sleep. I'm excited. I got a little busy, so I wasn't able to uh, read last night, and uh, and I missed it. <laughs> I really did. How are you doing? How are you doing this evening? Breathe. 
then. Hebrew boy into the Nile 
whatever. But you, we let the girls live. Exodus, chapter 2, the birth of Moses. About this time a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. So when Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she went uh, and sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little baby was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This might be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me. The princess told the baby's mother, I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to the pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own, her own son. The princess named him Moses. For the, she explained, I lifted him out of the water. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, when Moses went out to visit his people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend? Why are you beating up your friend, Moses said to the one who had started the fight. The man replied, who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you going to kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses was afraid, thinking everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what had happened and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. When Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a well. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters who came as usual to draw water and fill the water that droves for their father's flock. But some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from the shepherds. Then he drew water from their flock. When the girls returned to Ruel, their father, he asked, why are you back so soon today? An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. They answered, and then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. Then where is he? Their father asked. Why did you leave him there and invite him to come and eat with us? Moses accepted the invitation and he settled there with them. In the time, Moel gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah, to be his wife. Later she gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom. For he explained, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Years passed and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help, and their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. Moses and the burning bush, Exodus chapter 3. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father and Lord Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, a land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Oh look, the cry of the people of Israel have reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. Um, but Moses protested to God, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead? people of Israel out of Egypt. God answered, I will be with you, and this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you. They will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is the, my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Now go and call together all the elders of Israel. Tell them, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to me. He told me, I have been watching closely, and I see how the Egyptians are treating you. I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, 
Yevites and Jebusites now live. The elders of Israel will accept your message. Then you and the elders must go to the king of Egypt and tell him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. So please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go, and I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you. They will give you gifts when you go, so you will not leave empty-handed. Every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold and fine clothing from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. You will dress your sons and daughters with these, stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. Exodus chapter 4 But Moses protested again, What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say to the Lord, The Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked them, What is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it down on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw it down. The staff threw it down and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. Then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. So Moses reached out and grabbed it and it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. Perform this sign, the Lord told him, then they will believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, really has appeared to you. And the Lord said to Moses, now put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took and when he took it out again, his hand was white as snow with a severe skin disease. Now put your hand back into your cloak, the Lord said. So Moses put his hand back in, and when he took it out again, it was as healthy as the rest of his body. The Lord said to Moses, if they do not believe you and are not convinced by the first miraculous sign, they will be convinced by the second sign. And if they don't believe you or listen to you even after these two signs, then take some water from the Nile River and pour it out on the dry ground. When you do, the water from the Nile will turn to blood on the ground. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, O oh Lord, I am not very good with words. I have never been, and I am not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. Then the Lord became angry with Moses. All right, he said, what about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he speaks well, and look, he is on the way to meet you now. He will be delighted to see you. Talk to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with both of you as you speak, and I will instruct you both in what to do. Aaron will be your spokesman to the people. He will be your mouthpiece, and you will stand in the place of God for him, telling him what to say. And take your shepherd's staff with you and use it to perform the miraculous signs I have shown you. So Moses went back home to Jethro, his father-in-law. Please let me return to 
talking, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son, I command that you let my son go so he can worship me, but since you have refused, I will not kill your firstborn son. On the way to Egypt, at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, the Lord confronted him and was about to kill him, but Moses' wife said, Sized her son. She touched his feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. When she said a bridegroom of blood, she was referring to the circumcision. After that, the Lord left him alone. Now the Lord said, has said to Aaron, Go out into the wilderness to meet Moses. So Aaron went and met Moses at the mountain of God, and he embraced him. Moses then told Aaron everything the Lord had commanded him to say. And he told him about the miraculous signs the Lord had commanded him to perform. Then Moses and Aaron returned to Egypt and called all the elders of Israel together. Aaron told them everything the Lord had told Moses, and Moses performed the miraculous signs as they watched. Then the people of Israel were convinced that the Lord had sent Moses and Aaron. When they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped him. Exodus chapter 5 After this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go so that they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. Is that so? retorted Pharaoh. And who is the Lord? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. But Aaron and Moses persisted. The God of the Hebrews has met with us, they declared. So let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness, so we can offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. If we don't, he will kill us with a plague or with the sword. Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from their tasks? Get back to work. Look, there are many of your people in the land, and you are stopping them from their work. That same day, Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are crying. That's why they're crying out. Let us go and offer sacrifices to our God. Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen. So the slave drivers and the foremen went out and told the people, This is what the Pharaoh says. I will not provide any more straw for you. Go and get it yourselves. Find it wherever you can. But you must produce just as many bricks and uh, bricks as before. So the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt in search of stubble to use a straw. Meanwhile, the Egyptian slave drivers continued to push hard. Meet your daily quota of bricks, just as you did when we provided you the straw. They demanded. Then they whipped the Israelite foreman they had put in charge of the work of the work crews. Why haven't you met your quotas either yesterday or today? They demanded. So the Israelite foreman went to Pharaoh and pleaded with him. Please don't treat your servants like this, they begged. We are given no straw, but the slave drivers still demand. 
make bricks. We are being beaten, but it isn't our fault. Your own people are to blame. But Pharaoh shouted, you're just lazy, lazy. That's why you're saying, let us go and offer sacrifices to the Lord. I'll get back to work. No straw will be given to you, but you must um, produce the full order of bricks. The Israelite foreman could say that they were in serious trouble when they were told, you must not reduce the number of bricks you make each day. As they left Pharaoh's court, they confronted Moses and Aaron, who were waiting outside for them. The foreman said to them, May the Lord judge and punish you for making us stink before Pharaoh and his officials. You have put a sword into their hands, an excuse to kill us. Then Moses went back to the Lord, to the Lord and protested, Why have you brought all this trouble on your people, Lord? Why did you send me ever since I came to Pharaoh as your spokesman? He has been even more brutal to your people, and you have done nothing to rescue them. Wow. <laughs> Moses is having a tough time. And so are the people of Israel. Such unfairness, isn't it? As we go on in this story, we will see the power of God, especially as he uses those who make themselves available. Just like Moses and Aaron will. When we see each other again, we'll continue with Exodus chapter 6. Until then, God bless you. God keep you. Have a good night.